So many of you probably know this news that uh, about two months back, we reached a major milestone in science. Gravitational waves were discovered. Uh, the next day, most of the major newspapers across the world, uh, the front page was covered by this news. Okay? So, why is it so important? As we go along, it will become clearer. But this is just the beginning. Let's start the story. So, Einstein's theory of uh, <laughs> general relativity is uh, a relativistic theory of gravity which has so far passed all the experimental tests with flying colors. That theory describes gravity in a geometric way, which means that, uh, so consider a, uh, a flat, uh, stretchable surface, and you put two massive balls on that. And you know, if the balls are moving, they will kind of follow the geometry of the sheet, right? But on the other hand, the balls themselves are going to influence the geometry. So it is like a coupled sort of system where the geometry is telling matter how to move and matter is saying geometry how to curve. This was Wheeler's one-line explanation for general relativity. General relativity comes up with exciting predictions. In 1916, Einstein himself predicted gravitational waves that uh, when two very massive objects go around each other like this, they create ripples in this fabric of space-time. Now, in the example I gave you, this fabric was a two-dimensional surface. But for general relativity, it is a three-special and one-time-dimensional surface, which is like a four-dimensional space-time. Not very easy to imagine. Uh, but if you can hypothetically imagine that, there will be ripples in that space-time fabric which would propagate at the speed of light. So what happened was that uh, about a billion years ago, more than a billion years ago, two massive black holes, which were about 30 solar masses each, came close. They were going around each other they were emitting these ripples, that is, gravitational waves, which carried their energy. To balance for that, they had to come closer, and they started emitting even more energy, which led to an in-spiraling motion. And in the, peak, in the figure, you can see that the first part, where they are sort of going around each other and coming close, where the amplitude and phase and frequency both are increasing with time. At some point, they come so close that they will touch each other, and there will be a very violent and uh, merger phase, which are the most energetic events in the universe. That takes place, forming a final black hole, which sort of rings down like a bell. Okay? And that signal, which was predicted by general relativity, was observed in two detectors in the US, two LIGO detectors, which are 3,000 kilometers away, but almost at the same time, giving us a confidence that we detected gravitational waves. So, as I said, this is just the beginning of the story. And uh, how was they detected? So, the, the ripples in space-time are sort of, again, um, like, um, you know, they, what they do to the space-time fabric is to stretch and compress. It is like a rubber sheet through which you are sort of pulling and pushing, okay? So there, if you put a ruler, so consider a ruler which you use for measurement, and it is made of rubber, and you are sort of stretching and compressing. So the distance between uh, two, uh, uh, two points change, even though you will still read the same numbers. So, if we use something called Michelson interferometer, which has two arms, a laser beam is sent through a beam splitter, which uh, covers both the arms and comes back, and it, tell, it basically gives you the difference in arm length in these two in the interferometer. Michelson interferometer is one of the most precise distance measurement uh, device in, uh, for this sort of measurements. So, uh, but, but the thing is that 
the signal, the differential signal, is proportional to the arm length. So if the detector is big, you get a bigger signal. How big? So on the earth, you cannot go make two big detectors, but you can make about few kilometers detectors, because otherwise Earth's curvature comes into play, it becomes difficult to align mirrors. So LIGO detectors, which are the most sensitive detectors for gravitational waves which have operated on the Earth, are four kilometers, have four kilometer arms. You can see one of these illustrations. Uh, they can measure distances which are like one thousandth of the uh, size of a proton. They are so accurate. And these detectors detected the signal. So why, what is the big deal about it? I mean, why we are making so much fuss? The thing is that many people compare this to the Galileo's observation with the first telescope, which he made. As you know from history, Galileo's observations brought breakthroughs in science. We know that it, it was a crucial test to prove that the sun is at the center of the solar system and the planets are going around it. Today, we cannot think about any other possibilities. But it was a big thing there. And as you know, it has a significant effect on uh, our day-to-day -day life as well as the society as a whole. Now, th that's why when LIGO, with this detection of gravitational waves, is starting a new era in astronomy, people are highlighting it. Okay? So, uh, the uh, question is that, have we learned a lot? I mean, have we exhausted all the knowledge that was available in gravitational waves? The answer is no. It is just the beginning. It is a very important milestone. So what is there to see now? Well, gravitational waves are carrying a lot of information. Okay? In fact, uh, they are telling a long story even about these black holes. We just don't have enough ears right now to listen to all those. We need many more detectors in order to decode all the information that are uh, engraved in these gravitational waves signals. For instance, right now, we cannot even say accurately where, the, where on the sky this event happened, what was the distance, because we had only two detectors. If we make more detectors, then these sort of possibilities will be there. We would be able to uh, accurately locate the source on the sky. Again, why is that so important? Because we will be able to then observe the same source with multiple electromagnetic telescopes, which will be fantastic, because we will have a full coherent story of the most violent events in the universe. Okay? And then what? Well, again, right now, with LIGO and these sort of ground-based detectors, we will be seeing only a small part of... Uh, of the whole gravity wave spectrum. It is like, for example, what we see is a very small part of electromagnetic spectrum. Gravitational waves are there in every uh, spectrum, okay, every frequency. So uh, LIGO is covering, consequently, the uh, uh, audible range, basically around 10 hertz to maybe a kilohertz. But when we, uh, uh, if we go to space, for example, we can go to the lower frequencies, which will be very useful for seeing supermassive black holes. They are at lower frequencies. Then we may be able to see the radiation that is coming right after Big Bang. Okay? Now, again, I mean, the way I am saying, it may look like that we are just talking about some details. But the thing is that, you know, when we are sort of working very uh, hard, trying to write scientific papers, etc., we feel like, well, there are these missing links, maybe there are these details which are missing, and we are sort of trying to fill up those details. But on a relaxed day, when we spend a lot of time staring at the walls, we feel that, at least I feel, that you know, 95% of the constituents of the universe are unknown. There is a phase in the very early universe, it's called inflation, when the universe was a fraction of a second old, a significant part of the universe's expansion happened during that phase. How do we know that? 
there is no direct observational evidence. We need to introduce that phase in order to explain the observations. Then, there are these very precise clocks in the universe, which can even challenge the atomic clocks. They're called pulsars. We don't know the properties of the material that the pulsars, basically, we think they are spinning neutron stars, they are made of. Then there are many other questions. For example, is general relativity the right theory of gravity? I told you that it has passed all the tests with flying colors so far. But science progresses by challenging. Just imagine the uh, early, uh, maybe uh, 1800s, Newton's law was uh, very accurate in predicting several things. You know how, uh, I mean, the day-to-day -day life uh, observations could be explained very well with Newton's laws of motion. But then, now we know that that law is not complete. It cannot explain things which move at high speeds. For example, you cannot accelerate bodies uh, as you like. You cannot break the velocity of light barrier. Faster a body is moving, harder it is to accelerate. So that way, we want to see whether Gravitational waves also can tell us something more about general relativity. Can it tell us when general relativity breaks? Then we'll be able to probably come up with new theories of gravity. There are this whole lot of questions, and they, all these answers probably are, uh, at least partially, can be captured by performing experiments in different frequency bands. These are not fantasies. All these experiments which are shown in this slide uh, uh, the, the cosmic microwave background, pulsar timing arrays, and so on. I'm not getting into all those, but those are real experiments which are being built right now. Okay, so they will probably start taking data a little later. And then, of course, you know, in the uh, uh, LIGO band, there can be a detector in India. Uh, it is being planned, and then hopefully it will also come up in a few years. So there are exciting times ahead. Now, when we are talking about these unknowns, like what we would be able to get from, the, uh, from new observations, we also try to see what else can we learn from gravitational waves. Okay? So one of the things is that you probably see these news also many times in the newspaper, that people are finding many, many planets outside the solar system. They are called exoplanets. We have so far detected a few thousand exoplanets. But the estimate is that there are probably more than 100 billion exoplanets in our galaxy. That is like a factor of, I think, 100 million. I cannot even connect the zeros. 100 million extrapolation. That can give you a little bit of discomfort. So can we test this? Can we really count the number of planets that are there in our galaxy? So my student Anirban and Shilpa, they calculated how much radiation is coming out from each of these planets. Okay? That is very tiny because you know planets are much, much lighter than a star, and a star is much lighter than big black holes. But it turns out, if the number is so large, the total gravitational wave energy that it is going to emit it is going to be quite significant. It is not as significant that the current detectors are going to detect. But there may be a day in the future when technologies improve that we may be able to count these uh, planets directly. We cannot do it in any other way. With electromagnetic ob observations, we are limited to a small volume. We cannot go beyond that, okay? because measurements of planets with uh, electromagnetic observation is not very easy. Gravitational waves have this property that they interact very weakly with matter which makes them very difficult to detect, but on the other hand, they can travel a long distance without getting distorted. So they preserve information for a long time. So maybe one day, this will become a reality. And this is just one example. Maybe people will come up with many, many different ideas with, to uh, find different information from the gravitational waves. Like I said, one of the key things would be to get the, detect the signal that is coming from primordial uh, 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 that, that is right after Big Bang. Okay? It will be a smoking gun test of this phase called cosmic inflation. Now, uh, before I end, I want to tell you something um, 
very interesting. So as I said, this is just the beginning. Okay? Gravitational wave astronomy sort of was born on uh, uh, two months back when the results were announced. And the journey has begun. This journey will be long. As you know, in electromagnetic astronomy, uh, after Galileo, 400 years have passed, and we have done wonders in astronomy. It has completely changed the way we look at things. Now, if you see what are the current astronomy projects uh, in electromagnetic astronomy, you will see there are many big projects which are coming up. And if you see what they are sort of trying to aim, are things like this, that how fast the universe is accelerating, how exactly it is expanding, in other words. Then, uh, uh, then uh, say things like, are there black holes in the centers of the galaxies? Okay. Then um, you may say, what are the detailed features in the cosmic microwave background? Then uh, people are trying to, trying to create arrays with pulsars uh, to you know, measure, um, have more accurate measurements of uh, gravitational waves. But the interesting question is that, interesting thing to observe is that, 100 years ago, we had no clue about all these objects even. That means forget about looking for the details involved in these objects. We did not even know that these objects exist. So, uh, as you know, uh, it, all these things are serendipitous discoveries, that the universe is expanding, that there is this cosmic microwave background, that there are pulsars, all these things are uh, people just came to know when they are observing. So now when I am trying to predict that what we are going to see with gravitational waves, maybe it is too much of an extrapolation. Maybe we don't even know what we are going to see with gravitational waves. As I said, that uh, this journey has just begun. We have certain expectations that we think that we, will, we are going to see certain things. Probably that will be true in the beginning of the journey. But as we progress, probably we will be able to see things we, we, which we cannot even imagine right now. Thank you.